For some people, visiting a haunted house and having a paranormal experience can seem like a lot of fun, but it can be a lot less fun if you're living in one. In this video, I'm going to share with you some of the signs that you may be experiencing a haunting and give you some tips to help you deal with it. Hello, I'm Wendy Rapp, spiritual life coach and intuitive reader. On this channel, I help you as a spiritually awakened person grow and evolve on your soul's journey. And if you enjoy information like this, hit the subscribe button because I upload a new video every Sunday. So what are some of the signs that you may be experiencing a haunting in your own home? Well, the signs vary. One could be, oh, there's a room in your home or a spot in your home that is always inexplicably cold. Even in the middle of the summer, this room is cold. Or you experience knocking sounds, hear footsteps, rapping on the, on the walls or you have technological issues in the home. Uh, the lights flicker on and off, the TV turns on by itself, the phone rings, nobody's there. Or strange things could be happening with the plumbing. Uh, the toilets flush on their own, uh, the sink faucets turn on on their own. You may have unexplained smells that just appear from out of nowhere, uh, the smell of tobacco smoke or perfume. Or you may notice objects being moved. Um, you know you put something down in one spot, it disappears and then it reappears in another part of the house. Or you notice furniture has been moved or cupboards have been opened. Or even perhaps you notice an object being thrown across the room. That has happened to me one time. You may hear voices when no one is there. Or you may think you saw a shadow or a figure out of your peripheral vision, which is very common, by the way. Or maybe you actually see a full apparition. If you have pets, you may notice your pets behaving strangely. You may notice your dog staring at a corner and barking or growling at something that you're not seeing. Or you may have a cat who does the same type of thing, will stare at an area perhaps hiss, or even your pets may act as if they're being chased by someone. If you're highly intuitive, you may feel you're being watched and there's no one there. Or you may walk into a room and it just gives you a bad vibe. The room may be lovely, but oh, there's something about the energy in that room that just makes you feel off. Or you may even sense a presence in the room with you. And now I just want to clarify something. If you do sense a presence in the room with you, do not make the assumption that's your angels or guides. I've had people say that. If you are getting that classic goosebumps feeling of like, ooh, something's off here, your angels and guides don't make you feel that way. Your spirit team, your angels and guides have been with you since birth and they feel like you, they feel like your own energy. And most people don't even know because they're very, they're such a high loving vibrational energy. Most people aren't even aware they're around. And once you do open up and you become more in tune with your own energy and spirit energy, you don't really, I know they're with me, but it's not like I feel them the way I feel a spirit, a, an earthbound spirit in the room. I noticed my guides, my team's energy when I'm going through some kind of challenging time and I pour my heart out to them or even if I haven't poured my heart out to them, if they know I'm going through something challenging, I will feel their love. Sometimes they just come into me and it's like an embrace. It's like a hug. It's very calming. It's very peaceful. It's very loving and very soothing. That is not the kind of energy most intuitive people pick up on when they pick up on someone who is here stuck on the astral realm. Unlike our angels and guides, ghosts are on the lower astral levels. And when we do sense their energy, it can feel very uncomfortable. And I want to make it clear that just because it feels uncomfortable doesn't make it negative. So what should you do if you have any of those signs that I listed? Well, the first thing you should do is debunk. I always debunk everything for it, rule everything out. 
if the plumbing is acting haywire, is there an issue with the plumbing? Maybe you should call the plumber to have it checked out. Toilets sometimes do flush on their own. Sinks can sometimes turn, the faucets can turn on on their own sometimes. It has to do with water pressure, I was told. But get it checked out. If your electronics are acting wonky, well, call an electrician and make sure everything is working the way it should. If you're hearing rapping noises or tapping, it could be pipes in the wall, it could be maybe rodents or some animal that got in. Check these things out, even voices. If you're hearing voices, are you sure it's not your neighbors next door that are talking and you're thinking it's coming from within your own home? Really do a thorough investigation on your own and debunk the um, phenomenon you may be experiencing because it may not be paranormal at all. Now, if you do happen to witness something like an object moving or a, an apparition in front of you, well, then obviously you have a haunting going on in your house. So what should you do if you do have a haunting in your home? Well, the first thing is don't panic. If a spirit is making noises or showing themselves to you, they're usually just trying to get your attention. Sometimes these spirits could be spirits who were previous owners of the home or the property that you're living on. It could even be a soul that followed you home because there was something about your energy that felt very safe and familiar to them. Now, if the spirit isn't being disruptive and you're like me, you may not feel the need to move them on. I usually acknowledge that spirit's presence. I ask if they want help moving forward. And if they don't, then I just let them know, okay, then if you're going to be around here for a little while, there are rules, there are boundaries, this is my home and this needs to be respected, then I ignore them. And usually, with time, they move on. Sometimes the spirit is attached to that home and they stay on in a protective role. I've had experience with spirits like that in homes I've lived in. And my advice is, I don't bother them, they don't bother me. But what if the spirit is being disruptive and you want it gone? Well, then you're going to have to take ownership of your home. But before you initiate any contact with the spirit, always call in your, your guardian angel, your spirit team for protection, surround yourself in the divine white light, and call in Archangel Michael, who is our protector, and Archangel Raphael, who is the angel of healing, who, the archangel of healing. He will help promote a state of peacefulness, calm, and healing for both you and for that spirit, that soul. Calling in those two archangels also really does help to alleviate your own fear. Then in a calm and firm manner, you let that spirit know, the one who's being disruptive, you must leave. And in no uncertain terms, this is my home, I don't want you here, you must leave. And then tell Archangel Michael to make sure this spirit goes. Trust me, Archangel Michael will make sure that that spirit is removed from your home. Now, there have only been two times where I've had to call, Arch call on Archangel Michael to help me in a situation like that. Usually when souls come to me, they're interested in moving forward, moving on into the light, and they just need a little help and a little guidance to do that. But I've had two souls who, over the years, this was a number of years ago, who showed themselves to me who were rather nasty people in this life, and they continued to be rather nasty souls in the astral realms. And they were not interested in moving forward. They were playing games, and the game got nasty, and it's like, okay, that's it, I'm done. And I told Archangel Michael, they're out of here, get them out, I don't want them back in. I've never had any more uh, disruptions from those energies after that. So know that when you do call in Archangel Michael and you make it firm and you make it clear that spirit has to go, after you let that spirit know, Archangel Michael will usher them out and they will protect you from having that spirit re-enter. Now in all my years of seeing spirits, and I've been seeing them since I was three years old, 
I'm 59 now, gives you an idea how long it's been. I've only had to really usher them out with any force those two times. And Archangel Michael backed me up and got them out. Usually, just talking to the soul, explaining that they no longer live here. This is my living space now. I'm not comfortable with your energy here. You need to go. It will help that soul to make that transition they need to make, but it's also why you need to call in Archangel Michael and Archangel Raphael. Raphael does help with that healing process and will help to raise that soul's vibration so that they'll want to move forward. Usually it's not a difficult process to claim your space with the soul. Another thing to keep in mind is if you don't really feel comfortable at all speaking to the spirit, then you should get some help. Don't try, if you're really not comfortable with it, don't even attempt it. Instead, contact someone through a New Age Center or spiritual center near you. If you live in the New York, New Jersey area, there's Earth Spirit New Age Center. They can recommend someone who can come to your home and help you with this process and really clear that soul for you. And also don't forget, ghosts aren't monsters, uh, unless they acted like monsters in this life. Uh, they're really, they're not monsters. They're people. They are people who loved their family, who loved their friends, who had a life, and just like you and I. So when you do make any kind of contact with them or initiate any kind of contact, show the same respect you would to anyone. Trust me when you do that. When you approach with respect, you can hold your ground, you can be firm, but respectfully, you will get a better a better outcome from that situation and you can even help them in that way by sending them love and healing. You don't have to know necessarily how to help them move forward. Just sending them love and healing and talking to them kindly can help raise their vibrations so they can move on to where they need to go. And whatever you do, please don't play with Ouija boards. They're not a game. It's not exciting and fun to open a portal to the astral realm and then have anyone who wants to come through, come through. Most people I know who play with them have had issues in their life and then getting rid of those spirits who have attached themselves can be a very difficult process. So please, just whatever you do, don't play with the Ouija board. I hope that information was helpful for you. If you have any questions or comments, please leave it in the comment section below because I'd love to hear from you. You can follow me and link up with me on social media. The links are below in the description box. And as always, remember, you are a spark of the divine. Share your light with the world. Blessings.